There's one thing I really hate. It's listening to a bunch of guys screaming talk show hosts, all right, yelling at their guests and, and any fool stupid enough to call in with a question. I mean, whatever happened to please and thank you? Well, tonight you're going to meet the rudest, most obnoxious talk host in America. I mean, I mean, these guys make me look like a Boy Scout. They're going to try to justify their behavior to our audience and each other. I hope all of their screaming and insults isn't too much for me. Oh, so easily for me to be shocked. Next, the Barbarians of Broadcasting. I'm going to introduce first at the loudmouth, well named for this loudmouth, all right, a fellow by the name of Tom Likas, who is, as a matter of fact, uh, let me show you a little bit of uh, Likas. You got the monitor out here so our audience can see it here in the studio and our audience at home. Watch. This is Tom Likas on, uh, on radio. He's now at KFI in uh, Los Angeles after making his way through Phoenix, Arizona safely. Go ahead. Let's see Likas. I'm asking no, I you want now, to see tape. That's what about a community where when you're 50, you get booted out? What are the reasons? Oh, maybe because I don't want to live around false teeth, liniment, and colostomy bags. Mm-hmm. All right, that's like us. Now, a guy that everyone in America knows, especially in the New York area, one of the finest in the business, good friend of mine, great American, all right? Don't kick any ass here, you'll have mine to kick, too. Let me introduce you to Bob Grant. Let's take a look at Grant for a second, huh? Let me, let me see Bob Grant at work. Let me see Bob Grant at work, huh? All right, uh, let me have some audio. Come on. That's Come on, because folks. Let's you're see a certified Grant. wimp, uh, Ralph. I was just telling the truth. In the past, you have abused me. Yes, I have, and I will again, because you annoy me. Also, I would like to say that tomorrow, when all right. Bob, all right, let me, let me ask you a question. You're another darling of the feminists uh, with your views on women's uh, place in the home. If you had your choice, where would you like to see women? Besides your bedroom. Where would I like to see I'd like to see women where they were back in the good old days of the 1950s. That's where I'd like to see them. Well, isn't that kind of turning back the clock a little bit, though? Well, uh, no, I don't think we're turning back the clock. I think what we would uh, do would be to improve what we have today. I'm being a little facetious when I say back to 1950. I think it's gotten out of hand. It's gotten carried away. Where is it written that for every anchor man there has to be an anchor woman? Would you show me where it's written? It's not, but if they're talented and they're good, no reason why they shouldn't. I mean, look at our Jennifer Bloppy here. I mean, I, A, I think she's good and great, uh, not too, too bad to look well, at. Well, I don't either. want to sidetrack the uh, issue on talking about that, but what bothers me is when people are going to hire someone and they say, ooh, I know this guy is qualified, I know he'd be ideal for the job, but we gotta get a woman. Who says we gotta get a woman? Well, Tom, while we're on women here for just a second, how about uh, women in combat? Uh, you've had no problem with women exchanging their aprons for a flak jacket and an M16, have you? Oh, no, no problem at all. As a matter of fact, it's sexist to expect men when they turn 18 to have to go register for the draft while women sit home and take no risk and take no part in defending this country, period. You don't think women take a part in defending the country just Absolutely because they're sitting home? Absolutely not. Absolutely Who the hell do you think is going to raise your kids, pal, if uh, Why if can't men raise line? kids? Well, because men, you, men usually start really? the wars. Why can't men raise men kids? Men usually start the wars. Oh, I mean, why why, women be out, why shouldn't going? women be out on the battlefield, huh? I take it uh, you wouldn't mind seeing a draft of, uh, of women, then? Absolutely not. I think men and women should share equally, because if women are going to go around saying they're feminists and they're going to follow the feminist movement, they should take it to the nth degree. It's very convenient that feminists 
Never go around and say that it's unfair or sexist that only men can be drafted. This guy doesn't draft really women that. too. This guy doesn't really believe that. As dumb as he looks, he's not that dumb. I absolutely do believe that. He doesn't really believe that. You want to hear how dumb he is, Bob? What do you think of women who stay home with their husbands? With no children. No children. Let's get real about this. No Only children. people with no children. No children. What, are, what, what do you think of them? I think that women who stay home and have their husbands taking care of them are prostitutes. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And because I don't want to offend, I don't want to offend the sensibilities of the audience in Schenectady, which says my show is a little bit too obscene. If my wife... If my wife were here right now, bleep this, would you? She'd kick the shit out of you. Well, I think you're a pimp. You are a pimp. Hey, flow. How about you? Would you go in the service? Would I go in the service? Yeah. No, I think we should have a professional military. So you want the women in? This is great now. Wow. Figure this no. out. Huh? Figure this out. No. I mean, I, I mean, does this sound like I a that if there's huh? going to be a draft and you're going to draft men, you've got to draft women equally. You know, equally. And, and he wouldn't be drafted, Bob, so he'd be at his command post in Canada overseeing the women in the war. By virtue of what he said a moment ago, he shows that he's immature and that he really doesn't respect women. Because oh, really? a woman in the home is more than what he said, much more. A woman she in the home the with no children? The family. What is a woman doing she sitting raises home the without, children. W without going out and earning a living, without going out and doing something? Women who raise children, that's one thing. It's the toughest job in the world. But to have a woman sitting home and watching television while her husband goes out and earns a living, she's a whore and he's a pimp. Let me Period. Ask, well, let me ask you, this is, the same, this is the same line of crap I heard you use on Geraldo's show. I mean, you've never come up with anything new. Your act hasn't changed. You brought this up. I didn't bring it up. Maybe but you guys should have researched it, huh? a little more. After still you walk with, with it, aren't I'm you? With it I see you've grown through. a beard now that you're in L.A. You want to be with the boys, huh? Phoenix. I have enough. I have enough confidence. I have enough confidence in my manhood that I'm going to stand here and let you do that and let you show yourself what you are, which is nothing but a name caller. That's all you are. The people here know it. You got these people barking like dogs out here. All right. And you are the perfect MC for this. You are for this. This is your public. I love it. You love it, right? I know you love it. We'll be back in just a second to talk more to this dog. You're meeting the barbarians of radio tonight, folks. Barbarians of broadcasting, I should say. Some of them great, some of them not too great. Tom, uh, while we're on women, well, I'm not going to ask that question because I doubt that you ever have been. Right? Uh, but uh, let, let me start with Lester Consolving. Uh, many of you uh, know Lester from the time uh, he worked uh, in, uh, in New York City. Uh, you know him in, uh, in Baltimore right now, I believe he's with WFBR Radio. Lester, you're constantly accused of being a gay basher on your, on your show in Baltimore. Do you have a problem with gays? Well, number one, it, de it depends on how you define the word basher. If, if uh, anyone who objects uh, to uh, the term, for instance, gay, I don't think it should be called gay. I don't think there's anything gay about it because uh, the ranks of the gays are being decimated, as you know. I think one of my listeners came up with a much better idea, called them SADs, which means sexual AIDS distributors. Not all. <laughs> Tom, uh, you've had a lot of time in your hands. You're one of the, in, in fairness to you, you're one of the best guys I know at monitoring talk shows around the country. You've listened to Lester's show. Yes, I have. Do you think his critics have a valid point uh, when they accuse him of being a homophobe? Oh, he's absolutely a homophobe. He's an AIDS-phobic. And, uh, frankly, I think a lot of the things you say on the air are irresponsible. They whip up a lot of needless hysteria. And, uh, I'm amazed that they allow you to continue going on. I look on that with raving. the greatest pleasure, having been denounced by Hairless Joe, the Phoenix Whorehound. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Let me, let me, let me, let me point something out. 
something out. You're reading. You've written a script for this program. No, You're no, reading no. it off a no, pad no, no, over no, I'm there. just covering it. Like I've never material? before been on South Show or this? Gorilla Theater. You know, you have to write a script. How did they find you? Do you Bob Orban Did they bring you in with a rope? Did they bring you in with a rope? Is your whole show scripted when you're on in no, Baltimore? No, no, not the whole oh, show. No, just no. part of it. Occasionally we get strange people like you, but we enjoy it. It makes it very colorful. And by the way, do you have anything against barbers? Do I have anything against barbers? Now, you see, you're a name caller. And name calling? You you're a name How caller. How can I be calling a name? I, uh, uh, do you think I, No, I see where you're heading. I've heard you your program. I, you have. I, I I'm delighted. I congratulate you on your appreciation of culture. No, I... Listen I, any time. I, I will only we'll stop, I I you stop and look at train wrecks and car accidents, okay? I've, they call I'm that rubbernecking. And I listen to your show. I've stumbled upon it many you, times. Uh, how did yeah. you stumble? Tell us about it. How did you stumble? No, I don't Where particularly, is it that you I don't particularly care how we stumble. I, I, I want to get back to some intelligence on the show. Let me come to Bob Grant. Bob. Listen to your show. is like watching well, a train wreck. Let's face it now. Let's face it. You've gone through this. I know a lot of other people have. Some of your New York critics accuse you of expressing racist views on your show. Why would uh, someone come to that conclusion? Usually the person who accuses me of being a racist is himself a racist. For example, just today, I got a call. I won't even tell you the pigmentation of the caller, but it was quite obvious. And he... Why was it obvious? Well, he sounded very... Did he sound black. oriental? Oh, he's not, not a racist. You know, no. you know, how can you tell on the phone? <laughs> I was going to say, for the first time in my life, I would agree with Bob Grant. That, that's part of it. I don't know what that means the first time, but I, anyway. Right, right. Uh, but how did you tell a person's race? Well, the guy was black. The guy was black. How do you black know? Because he told me he you was black. You can tell a person's race by the way it comes the out on the phone? The guy told me he was black. Oh, he told you was. That's good. Now we got to that. There's uh, a guy approaches. practicing to be a, a prosecuting attorney. Hey, did you ask me a question? Yeah, I did, uh, okay. Bob. Uh, I can understand coming you feel up. I can understand coming up from Baltimore. How you try to make the most out of your appearance here? Baltimore with, is well, I thought the this home guy, of I Baltimore is guy, the home of H. L. Mencken, a Buster, who could I leave you in the shade. Nice. Unfortunately, it's also the home of Barbara Monkowski, who a few years ago could stand next to you and leave you in the shade. Oh, but. I disagree with Barbara most of the time, but I do do think that I I, I would never ridicule her height. I really wouldn't. Was she I ridiculing her height? Yes, I think so. I said could stand next to you and leave you in the shade. All right. I think oh, I, I was right. describing uh, her girl. I, I, I ridicule. Gotta I listen retract. on television. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. not like it's radio. Fast. It's fast. Not like radio, babe. Tom like it. Radio? Wait a minute. Radio I is the I traveled 3,000 miles for this. What is radio? it? Radio oh, no, is, come back a, to time. is the senior electronic medium where active Americans I can do dozens of things while they listen instead yes, of yes, sitting sir. paralyzed yes, in front and of so a tube was, of the vast yes, wasteland. Sir. And so was Plato, and he's dead too, like you. All right. All right. All right. Hey, very clever. Let me come, back. Let me come I back. thought he's into history. He's into history. He's into history. Do you know you look like a fat Walter Mondale? Thank you very much. Tell me what that is. There's more of me to love. Right? Am I right? Now look around at the audience. Look around and smile. I will. I mean, is that Thank a fat Walter Mondale or not? There's I, I thought we got rid of you four years ago. That's, Tom. There's more of me to love, and you are the man with 10,000 teeth. So, so let's proceed with the That's libretto. Right. The bigger to bite your neck with her. Tom uh, page two on that, by than, the way. Uh, hectic schedule has allowed you to listen to probably, uh, I guess, all of your competitors' shows. Uh, I don't know if you're looking for fresh material or, or what. Have you noticed any racist tendencies in uh, Mr. Grant's program? Well, I'm a native New Yorker now living on the other side of the country. You know, I never got a chance to answer the question okay. because this amateur night... <laughs> hey, look, I don't need this audition. This guy that came up here... <coughs> this guy that came up here in this silly usher suit... Your suit is good enough for the White House, Buster, and I was here and working right opposite you, you know, you're such and a I had a delightful time. time. You're such a small time person. I'm such a Mark, small time. You're uh, a big time, aren't you? I, I'll tell you the I would say, now, way Mark, I would I'll describe you. Back to you. page one. You are. Back to page one. Put that page. This is Bobby's written everything down. This is, this is why Monday lost. He had to read everything. No, no, no. Let me. No. This gentleman is 
is a professional anger artist, a melodrama actor who hams it up. If you think it's genuine, you have been fooled. Okay. They can do anything was, on New York I radio. was going to say, I was going to say originally, all right, to the folks to uh, turn off Lester's uh, microphone. Hey! But this is the same thing as turning it off. This is the same thing as turning it off. Goodbye, Lester. Lester, bye. 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 We'll be back in just a minute. We'll be back in just a minute. We'll be back in just a minute. Transportation for the Morton Downey Jr. Show, furnished by Redwood Limousine. When in New York, call 212-226-7665. You'll notice uh, Lester is back with us again simply because not only did Lester overreact, but one of our uh, security guards, always on the lookout for nutcases, <laughs> found one in our studio. Let me introduce to you, let me introduce to you the real father of controversial talk on television, all right? His name is Alan Burke. I'd like you to see a show. I'd like you to see a segment of a show. Bring that monitor out for my audience and for the folks at home. A show that was not allowed to be aired just 20 years ago today. Let's see Alan Burke at work. Well, listen, Mr. Rosenberg. You're I'm... communicating to me already without answering. You any better questions. believe I'm communicating, and right. you're it's getting hostility. the message. You it's, bet it's, it's hostility, because I think you're a nut. Well, just relax. Now, don't just... touch me, boy. Out you'll go. Just relax and be calm. Look, all right? look. Why can't people take care of is this free television or isn't it? No. It's not free television? No. Why isn't it free? Nothing is free. Nothing is free? No. This belongs to us. This television studio belongs to the people. It does? Not to you, and not to ABC, and not to Metro Media. In life, everything belongs to the people. Don't you understand that? You can't throw anybody out. You're throwing out. What the hell is that, man? The money you make people look like asses? The money. You're a human being, too, man. What do you own? You own this camera? Uh-huh. Oh, the great 60s, weren't they? <laughs> they were fun. The daddy of it all. He started it all. I'm proud to call him my friend, Alan Burke. Alan, Thank you, since Mark. you did that program, pal. Mark. You've seen you've seen a lot of you've seen a lot of uh, copycats come along like uh, Tom Likas. You think anyone will be looking at a Tom Likas uh, tape 20 years from now? I think so. I think that uh, when the psychiatrists review what they have <laughs> taken on put on video to use in uh, class studies, that I'm sure Tom will be a case study. I think. <laughs> I see no reason to why point not. out, Mort, that in 1984, Mr. Burke was my competition in Miami on WGBS radio and I kicked his ass. I just wanted to point that out. Could that have been because WGBS's signal went out to the fishing fleet? <laughs> well, our signal was no bargain either, but we had four times the audience, so what can I say? Well, I'd say as for humility, you're tough. <coughs> well, thank you. At least I don't go tackling people when I appear on a television program. I didn't tackle. No, this very nice guy, this very nice guy tackled me. I didn't tackle him. Uh, Tom, Tom, uh, were Martin. you just born obnoxious, or were you trying to copy uh, Alan Burke? No, I was not trying to copy Alan Burke. I've you been were obnoxious born obnoxious. since birth, yes. <laughs> and now they pay me to do it. Listen, I don't, I don't want to change the, the temper of this entire program at all. I mean, it's We did a, a show a couple of years ago with Oprah Winfrey, oh, do you yes, remember? That was remember? It, and I might add on that show... And some nutcake got up and poured soap over Jerry Williams. Jerry Williams. Head. Every yeah. time I show up with you, somebody gets something thrown all over their head. Well, yeah, this time it happened to me. Yeah. This time it happened I would to me. like to point out that I Consulting, think this... is your pacemaker all right? No, no, I was following the example of the New Jersey Giants. Well, it's, it, you see, it, it's, it's, it's called the New York Giants. I'm well, having a Hutt terrible time think so. I'm having a terrible time, and I must tell you why. All right. I've known Bob Grant for many, many years. When I was doing the television, Bob would go on vacation, I would sub on his radio show. So I consider him a real pro. I must admit something, and don't take it personal. I never heard of the oaf in the red jacket. 
Who is this? Lester Consolving. Lester Consolving is the guy who went head to head with Bob Grant here. And what in happened New York. to him? I don't know. How do you do against you, Bob? You remember the phrase this guy used about kicking ass? That's why he's acting the way he is. This is a very disturbed man right here. Had I known he was going to be here, I don't think I would have come. This uh, is Grant, a Grant, man. I'll tell you what. Why don't you just tell the truth for a change? It would be a distinctive addition to your show. That is, is absolute Tell garbage. I've never been head this to head with you because I would, I would kick your derriere. I'd like to try to bring some so, taste to this. This guy is I so could have kicked. Oh, yes, I did. Guy who pours water on you, wrestles with a guard, and incidentally, while they are on the ground, I saw him try to kiss him. He wants to bring taste to it. Alan Burke, you, you and I have uh, <laughs> been looking at radio talk. Uh, let's play a little word association all here right. for a second, all right? Some of the talk show types. Geraldo. When he opened the safe, was it Al Capone's <laughs> safe? I immediately visualized what must be between his ears. The same thing that was in the safe. <laughs> Nothing. All right, how I don't think that Geraldo has a future as a talk show host. How about, uh, he's doing pretty well in the ratings. How about your future, O? Well, you Tell think, us about I your have, future, O. I don't have too much to worry about because I'm among the rich and famous. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, let's hear it. Let's hear it for the hey. I also Down might in the add, I also might add, Rattel. I also might add, he taught his kids something. He's got a kid who works on Wise Guys, which is yes, a pretty damn let me, good show. Let me brag and say that my eldest child is indeed the supervising producer and writer of Wise Guy for CBS. All right, let me ask you a question now. We're, we're name association, uh, Geraldo, we did Oprah. Well, we did Oprah together as guests. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you that I think, in fairness to the audience who believes that she is a wonderful, warm person, when that camera is on, she loves everybody. The minute the camera goes off, Miss Iceberg yeah. walks out of the studio. Has nothing to do with anybody. The whole thing is an act. Yeah, that Truly was kind of, that was kind of sad to say. What about Wait a Phil? Dunn? She comes from what Baltimore. What about Phil? I'm sorry. I'm she was produced in Baltimore. I'm going to get to you. A lot of hookers okay. come from Baltimore too, pal. Uh, uh, not, no. not half as many as you've got uh, here. A lot of hookers and tight ends, and they don't all play for the uh, the old Colts. Now, let me ask you, Phil Donahue. I, I would like to reiterate what you once called Phil, a wimp. You called Phil a wimp, and I think that uh, that was an accurate description. I think that uh, he has illusions of grandeur. I think he thinks he is Edward R. Murrow. <laughs> I really do. No, I think Phil does a very credible job for a bunch of ladies in the morning. But I think if you put Phil on every night with gutsy subjects like you choose, then you would have a real problem keeping him up in the numbers. Lester? I, I, wait a minute. I want to right. say one thing, because I don't know how long, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to stay in the same room with the amateurs. But uh, I would like to make the statement that you, Morton, are the only guy to have come along in the last 20 years who comes close to doing what I did, and you're doing it very, very well, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> Let me give you a uh, name association here, all right? Let's go to the TV radio guy, Larry King. Larry King is a celebrity stroking uh, cattle herder that... Uh, now, look, at he didn't read this. Right. No, no, I mean, it's quite obvious uh, that his guests, he treats like cattle. In other words, speak up, that's not a question, uh, that's a statement. Uh, hello, Omaha. And when he has a guest... There is no apple that is unpolished. There is no boot that is unlicked. Bob Grant, uh, you know all of them. You've been around for a long time, pal. I just uh, helped you celebrate. I won't uh, anniversary. <laughs> all right, so you've been around a long time, a lot longer than I have, for sure. Uh, what about these guys we just talked about? Are they all pros? Are they all playing games? Is it all BS, an act to get uh, people to like you or to hate you or to, to incite them? Is that what this game is all about? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you could say they're all pros because <clears throat> they're all getting paid for doing it. And uh, there's really, in all seriousness, there's really room for everybody. 
Uh, there's room for the lightweights uh, in some of those smaller stations. We've seen that. Uh, in some of the other towns like Baltimore and so forth. But, poor uh, but proud. Poor but proud. Yeah, Tell he, me, how much do you all, make? You've you been know. bragging all night. Tell us, how much did they pay you to be the New York Yankee bad boy? In all seriousness, there's really room for all the people that you've mentioned, uh, Alan, all the people that you've mentioned. And uh, if the public keeps tuning in, tuning in the radio, tuning in the television set, then I guess you could say that the person's yeah. doing something right. But here's the part that bothers me, all right? I wonder about guys who go on television or go on radio and profess a certain uh, political philosophy and don't bend with the times or who are indeed so intransigent because it's all an act that really they believe in other things. I wonder if that's what our business is made up. I know he wasn't like that, all right? I know he wasn't. Wally George tonight. I know he wasn't like that, all right? Uh, I have always, someone asked me the other day, how much of your show is show business? And I said, well, when I started nine months ago, zero, because I had no references, all right? Yeah. I had never been on television. I've been on nine months now. Yeah, about 10 minutes, about 10% of it is, is show business now because I have reference points where I remembered something worked and I'm gonna try it again. When the day comes that it's 25% show business, I ought to have my ass booted out and everyone else who gets on the air and lies, because that's all they're doing if they're phonies, and lie just to get the people excited. Let me Alan. ask a question, and I'd like uh, responses from all of these great minds that are here this evening. Do you believe that a talk show host, radio and or television, has a responsibility to go even further than simply trying to get rating points, to simply try to get a large salary, do you feel a responsibility toward the people that listen to you, the, the people that watch you? How about it, Lester? Oh, shouldn't I bow to the big... How the, about it, Lester? I just want an answer. I agree. You should not. You should, uh, you should, uh, you not should tell the truth. You should not just be aimed for ratings and uh, contrive rage like some big-time operators do. What you should do is tell the truth. <coughs> and uh and uh listen to the people bob how about it i think that nobody should express a view he doesn't sincerely hold if he doesn't really hold that view he should not express he's a liar it. he's a liar he's a phony he's posturing no. he's faking uh i may have problems with this gentleman next to me Thank but you. i would Thank bet you, you nice. i would bet you he's never expressed a view he didn't really believe I, uh, I, I do thank you, sincerely. Oh, I God no, I, 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 that, <laughs> I'm going to be swapping bubble gum in a minute, all right? <laughs> Next, we'll meet a professor who will try to take me to school for promoting this dangerous form of television. Stay with us. Barbarians of broadcasting with us. I, I want to come to the. I want to come to the dean of the insult first. Let me go down. I would like to ask a question. I, not, under normal conditions, I would not bring anyone's religion into this or the practice that they may involve themselves in. But in view of the obscene outburst made by the gentleman in the red coat, the pouring of whatever that is you're drinking. Are you water an on expert your head. on obscenity? Uh, yes, I am. Are you? Tell and, us about it. I will if you'll Dirty shut up. To what? Why don't you just shut no, up? No, I'm sorry. I will not shut up. <laughs> Place, Listen, you Let me assure you the freedom of speech here isn't there, Morton? For you, everyone, you including absolutely. Alan. Including you Alan, Alan go out and speak. Sit down. You outweigh me by at least 300 pounds. Oh, you... but he outweighed me. Would you like to come over and tackle me like you did him? No, I didn't. You bet you I would. did not tackle now, him. I... Oh. You're trifling with the truth again, Burke. You were not the truth. Let him the talk. Straight. Mr. Mondale, please let him talk. The question I would like to ask. Unless I misunderstood, is it solving? Is that your name? I'm, I'm serious. I don't know you. Ken Solving. Uh, no, it's Ken, Ken Solving. Solving. All right. Uh, oh. you, That's right. Is that the proper way? No, yes, yes, it is. You mess with my name, I'll mess with your name. I was we sat there for a half an hour beforehand, at which time you were polite. Now you are going into well, your Mau Mau Act. No, really? Let me ask you this in that half hour. I'd be delighted. What do you have in mind? Well, I hope you get laryngitis, first of all. <laughs> I would like to ask you during that half hour, didn't you tell me you were a priest? Yes. You are a Catholic priest? No. 
What kind of a priest are you? Why did you ask me? I was a Catholic priest. I told you I had a wife. Do you know many Catholic priests with wives? Mr. I know Burke? Catholic priests who have been married. I see. Yes. Indeed, I do. Well, let me ask what you this. Uh, would you, you like to me to go question? into your religion? You I mean, what has that got to do with it? Question? Why do we bring this in? I want to bring this in because Why? if you are a priest, you certainly are detrimental to the religion that How you absolutely are. absolutely lovely. You tell me about your religious experience, Alan. Are you an you authority? Just, you, yes, I am. Oh, why are you telling me about it? Why don't you well, want to tell me about your religious we'll experience? We'll have a show on religion Sunday morning. Sunday morning, 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 morning at 6, all right? Right where they belong. Now, let me come to uh, the professor, please. Professor Alan Walper, the director of journalism, Rutgers University in Newark, New Jersey. Professor, how are you? I mean, you... You've referred to my type of uh, show as, uh, I think you called it insult journalism. I mean, aren't you sorry that you did that now? Don't you see what a nice guy I really am? No, I didn't say insult journalism. I said it was an insult to journalism. There's a difference. Oh, an insult to journalism. <laughs> All right. I wouldn't insult you being a professor at a university where they give PhDs for fraternity hazing. I mean, well, what are you True. doing with the... Oh. It's true. Basically, I, I feel like I'm an intruder here. I feel like I went to a Nick game by mistake. <laughs> Never what? been this much action in a Nick game, Professor. I can't, I can't believe it. I, I'm not really sure why I'm here. I know that, that uh, talk shows are pretty hot. But I know Bob Graham for a number of years. I've been on his show. Actually, he's been on mine. And I'm not really sure what this is all about, except there seems to be a trend in the country where everybody shouts at each other and nobody what is, listens. What brings that trend about? I don't know. Look at all the people you've... I've never seen anything like this in my life. What's wrong with these people? They're nice people, but they're really... Yeah. They look I like mean, can you honestly tell me yeah. that there is anything wrong with this young lady? Can you honestly oh. tell me... Oh. Thank you, Mr. Gannon. I never Boy, said there was... Boy, are you a horny old guy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you, you talk about an insult to journalism. What Wait makes minute, you think, think every think time a show is talking I was that kidding. you have to be a journalist? I was kidding. I think the, the thing that bothers me about shows like this is that it pretends to be journalism. And when it's really not, Never. it's great entertainment. Never. Who's, who's pretending you're... to be a journalist? You see this? This is the only journalism award I've ever received. I put my cigarettes out in it and I spit in it. All right? That's it. That's the only journalist award I've ever received. It's called, let me go to Tom Likas. It's Tom, called, wait a minute, I, it's, called, it's called Public Affairs. I think you, you promote... I've never made you, my affairs less than public. You promote, you promote the news programs. You try to get as much credibility as you possibly can. I don't. I think you do. I've watched a show. I, uh, I watched, I'm not trying to get credibility. What, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kissing your ass. I think what bothers me, I saw the show last night to prepare for this, and, I, and what you do very well is you create stereotypes. You find stereotypes. And you, and you parade them out, and they scream at each other, and they holler at each other. Sometimes they beat each other up. <laughs> but they never really say anything, they never really say anything that lasts. It's like Chinese food. It's a half hour later and you forget the whole show. How often do you go to the Chinese restaurant, Professor? As much I like Chinese food. I thought so. Tom Likas. Tom Likas. Let, I, me, I, let me ask you a question, oh. pal. What do you think of the Professor's elitist view all right. And the only way people get any real information on talk shows is uh, with four guys uh, with uh, William Buckley bow ties. Well, I say this to a journalism professor. As a college dropout from Fordham University, those of us who can, do. Those of us who can't, become journalism professors. I sat in a university and I listened to people who were flops, who never made it in broadcasting, as writers, as anything, sitting there and teaching poor kids paying $25,000 a year so they can go out and learn how to go to, to Flagstaff, Arizona and become disc jockeys. It's, a, it's an absolute sham. Journalism, journalism departments, teaching journalism, it's a sham. I, I'm a dropout and Alan, it's a sham. You're not going to sit there and take that well, without in fact, a little what I'd, like, what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite him on Sunday to, uh, to share a podium with me where I'm accepting a first place for Society Professional Journalist first place award for a documentary I produced last year. Uh, who I saw think it? Uh, can you tell us who saw it, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! I you know, everybody can produce a documentary. A Nobody watches the damn things. They're the lowest rated things on television. You guys get federal grants. You spend all this money. All these five people yeah. paying for you. Yeah. So you can go there and win awards for things. Shows nobody watches. 
Why are you, why are you shouting? I don't because understand Because I'm making a point. Are you, I mean, it seems to me that it's really very important. I'm very hostile know. about this. I wasted a lot of money and time going to school and so I can help, listen to people like you telling me how to be a journalist. And you want to know something? I'm making ten times what you make, and I'm going to be a thousand times as well known as you are and more successful you'll be. So you can, you can sit oh, there and you can Thank you, Lord, for giving me a fucking gun. Nobody's ever watched. I mean, gee, it just drives me crazy. No, I've been, I've been a journalist. Wait a minute. I've been a journalist. I've been a journalist for 22 years, and one of the things I've learned to do is never to shout back at people, because people who usually shout are trying to hide a lot. And what I guess is that you're shouting... Well, I open myself up. You can ask me any question you want to. Go ahead. What am I hiding? How many times have you been married? I don't think you have anything. How many... Oh, no. No, no. This belongs to me now, folks. How many times have you been married? Twice. How many times have you screw around on your first wife? Never. Never screwed around on your first wife? Never. How many times have you messed around on your second wife? Never. How many times have you had sex since the day you got married the first time? I have no idea. He has no idea, no neither idea. does his wife, all right? Okay, next we'll meet a woman who says housewives should be paid for their labor. Stand by. I'm going to introduce you momentarily to Phoebe Jones, who is uh, wages for housework. And uh, first, I'm going to... Lester, you had a question that you wanted to ask the professor. Where's the professor? Professor, jump up at that loudmouth one more time. Alan, go ahead. Jump in there quickly. Professor, if I, if I could ask you as studiously as I know how, when you get this award for sig from Sigma Delta Chi, yeah. would you do me just one favor? Ask them why they accepted all that money from the People's Temple of the Reverend Jim Jones, would you? Pardon me? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that Sigma Delta Chi, this great journalism fraternity, took money... Society of Professional Journalists. That's right. They took money from the People's Temple of the Reverend Jim Jones. All right. Well, let me, let me get started Ask them about now. It. Well, no, that's pretty exciting. I'll look into it for you. Do yeah. it. And Phoebe, Phoebe, do it. Come on, because I, I want to hear Phoebe's point of view. Go ahead, pal. All right. Wages for housewives. Listen, Lycus. Wages for housework, not housewives, because we find that when women go outside the home to work, they're still working inside the home. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So women go outside the home, they do a double shift. And we're glad you finally got some women on the air. We've been on 40 minutes, and we haven't heard from a woman. Six of you men have been deciding women's futures here, and we would like to leave up the women's movement to decide and make choices for No, women. not the women's movement, the women. Not just the movement, the women. Yeah, well, we say all women really are in the movement. I mean, no, if you talk I about doubt the that women, very much. Yes, because I doubt women that are very fighting much. for choices for women. You are one of the, the first choice. attractive women I've seen in that movement. Most of them have hairy armpits no, and no, tattoos. No. You are. You are. You are insulting all women because women have been fighting for the choice to stay home and raise their children and for the choice to have careers, not for some men anywhere here or on Capitol Hill or anywhere to tell us what we're supposed to do. And in fact, you know, that's... No, I'm in that's favor of wages for housework. Good. I'm in favor okay. of it. Totally. Good. I and believe women to... should be get, uh, who are at home, who want to do housework and want to raise families, should get Social Security, should be p paid. I think that's all right. of those things should take place, that's all right? right? And we want that's that all work... should take place. We want that work recognized as work because what we do is we produce all you the workers I. of the world... <laughs> We produce all the workers of the world, yet you we don't are... do it alone. How but we you are you not... All the workers of the but world? we are not... It takes two. We, we can't do it with a woman alone. Excuse me, you've had your chance. Let women have oh, a chance. Oh, please, don't, please. don't give us this bullshit. <laughs> we Get we produce it. all the work, workers of the world, but we are not considered workers, and we want that changed. And not that when we ask for things like child care or comparable worth or Social Security or welfare, we want it because we are entitled to it. We've worked for it. And men pay it. for it because men go out and earn the living still in this world. Oh, women spend women. it, men make it. And they come That's back the and don't do any help. Boy, how many no men wonder when I asked him how many times he had had sex he couldn't think, huh? <laughs> I mean, what, what intelligent woman is going to lie down and let that lump on top of At her? At least huh? I, I do not have to pay for it. 
Thank you. Personally, I think the lady is absolutely right. I think that... Bob, I haven't heard, any, I I haven't heard anything out of our distinguished guest here because he's been ominously silent. Who is that, Bob? Yeah, Bob Grant. Bob, do you believe that women are entitled to the things that this lady is asking for? No, I don't think they're entitled to wages uh, as they would be if they were working in a factory or an office or something of that kind. Uh, I think uh, they are entitled, though, to uh, have their mate share with them in the responsibilities of the home. Well, maybe I'm and I think more and more husbands well, we are doing that. that. Do you that want wages? In the, do you want to punch a clock? And do you want a check every week? That sort of thing? No, we, we want the check every week, as most Western countries have, you may know, that oh, family yeah. allowance. This is, is a red herring issue. This is a non-issue. You know, you wait talk wait about it. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Let me tell you one thing. If you want a wage, I raise four boys, my wife. Right. If I had to pay her, then I'd be out of work. Right. We don't want but, them. We don't want them. We, we already get the money. We're talking so we about want, wages. We are talking about wages Social from... Social Security. Who's going to pay it? The husband? Yes, you might as well get divorced then. What the hell? It's not to be married. Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. Listen. 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 Of course, most women are not with men. One IRS, too. You want to make your own income tax? No, we want the money to come from the military budget. We want it in our oh, own name. Oh, not oh, for women. Oh, no, 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 Give us Does your husband charge you rent, ma'am? I get room and board, and I don't Do you, want to Does be he slave. charge you rent, I want money in my own right. But he doesn't want... charge you for rent or I utilities? What does he charge you for? I now? get room and board for all the work that I do. Apparently, and she's, a she's established a, a price on something. We'll be right back. Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Jr. Show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. I guess there, I guess indeed what we've seen tonight is the fact that they are the barbarians of broadcasting. Wait, 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 wait. Before, before we go on here, yeah. you asked me, I have a right now to ask you. Mm, go ahead. How many times have you been married? Three times. How many times did you screw around on your first wife? Never. How many times did you screw around on your second wife? About 14. <laughs> How many times did you screw around? You know what my fantasy was? What? To get through the Playboy calendar from January through December. Woo! How far did you go? October. Say, gentlemen, and I use that word advisedly, you are, you are experiencing and displaying for the country exactly why you get bad rap and asking questions like that of your host. You've got no class. Oh. Yeah. Well, Alan, Alan, that might be true. That might, no, Lester, no. Zip it, zip it, zip it. Did you I bring think, this guy I the think if Who we're going to be anyway? on radio, if we're going to be on television, we have the obligation, the obligation to let them know everything about us. No stone unturned including your extramarital affairs? Yes, if you've been stupid enough to have them, you should own up to it. Then let me tell you the things I've I know about... I've been married about... three times. What My you third said? wife, 11 years, and I've never touched another one. I know, but I want to talk about Riker. I think we ought to talk about Tom Riker. I think we Well, we already talk... talked about Tom, and he had no memory of anything. Well, I know, but... <laughs> you, could, you could talk about Tom Likas and do his... Total history in that exactly five seconds. You know, I got to tell you something. We've heard a lot of yipping and yelling tonight, and God knows some major differences of opinion. Well, I guess that's what freedom is all about. No one will ever convince me that good ideas only come from soft-spoken intellectuals in university conference rooms. Baby, if it's a good idea and you believe in it, stand up, shout about it. Yeah. That's what freedom's all about. That's what you guys can do. Stand up.